Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So here's the homepage of btc-e.com, and it's down. This is one of the oldest Bitcoin exchanges around. This is actually the second exchange that I was involved in, the first being Mt. Gox. Uh, Mt. Gox I just simply used to purchase Bitcoin using Dwala. And uh, I think I transferred them from there in Trade Hill to, to this exchange because at the time BTCE allowed you to trade in alts. There were very few alts. There were uh, PP coin, name coin, Litecoin. So it was one of the early exchanges and I also got hacked there or my account got hacked. I don't think it was the exchange's fault. Actually it was my fault for not using two-factor authentication. Although I'm not sure if two-factor authentication existed at that time but my account got hacked uh, regardless. Anyway, so they're gone. Uh, I think they're gone for good. They say they're down for a week, but here's the chart. You can see that it happened July 25th. The price goes flat right there at 25.46. If we go over to Bitfinex and look at the similar period, you can see that there was a drop off associated with that and Bitcoin price dropped down to 2400 has rallied back almost to where it was when BTCE was shut down. So what is going on? Well, more FUD. More fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And this story is, is so ridiculous. It's so laughable. Uh, first of all, you know the all of the mainstream media I haven't read all the articles but I have read enough of them uh, dances around the fact uh, that this person is a Russian citizen he was arrested in Greece how can you arrest the Russian citizen for crimes in the United States we're gonna see here that the US we, we already know that the US government is completely out of control uh, Jeff Berwick has covered this information, so is Simon Black of Sovereign Man, how the jurisdictional reach of the United States government, basically the politicians that run the United States, they believe that everybody in the world is their subject and has to follow their laws. And this is an example of it. Uh, this Vitnik character was picked up in Greece, but uh, he never left Russia, as far as I know, before that. Appar I've heard... In some, some of the rumors say that apparently they were watching this guy since 2011. And it looks like he went into Greece and that's where they nabbed him. So let's read this. U.S. jury, a U.S. jury indicted a Russian man on Wednesday as the operator of a digital currency exchange that handled more than $4 billion of Bitcoin and has allegedly been used for money laundering for people involved in crimes ranging from computer hacking to drug trafficking. Alexander Vinnick was arrested in a small beachside village in northern Greece on Tuesday, according to local authorities, following an investigation led by U.S. Justice Department along with several other federal agencies and task forces. U.S. officials described Vinnick in a Justice Department statement as the operator of BTC-E, an exchange used to trade the digital currency Bitcoin since 2011. They allege that Vinnick and his firm received more than $4 billion in Bitcoin over its lifetime and did substantial business in the United States without following appropriate protocols to protect against money laundering and other crimes. Now, when they say that he did substantial business in the United States, you have to understand that the way the U.S. government thinks about things is that anything a U.S. citizen does is considered to be within the United States. So, for example, if you run a gambling site in Europe where gambling is perfectly legal, if a U.S. citizen uh, logs onto that site and commits a crime because gambling is illegal in the United States, online gambling is illegal, then according to U.S. authorities, that European gambling site has committed a crime in the United States because an American citizen logged on to a European website. So this, uh, these people are insane. They're power mad uh, lunatics 
and of course they're going to go down because they no empire lasts forever but you can see the the incredible jurisdictional reach and insanity of these people uh, fortunately and we're going to see in the next article more fud against Bitcoin that uh, it doesn't matter none of this matters because it's the protocol it's the idea they cannot stop it uh, all they can do is fud which they're busily doing uh, continuing without following appropriate protocols to protect against money laundering and other crimes uh, by the way uh, you know you, this whole ruse of money laundering and uh, the know your customer and uh, the KYC and AML anti-money laundering regulations um, this is all just a ruse anyway if you look at Poloniex for example uh, Poloniex uh, you you can't send and receive dollars on Poloniex, so you can't send your dollars to Poloniex to buy Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. Poloniex has USDT, which is which is another cryptocurrency. So if you want to hedge in a US dollar equivalent, which I've covered before, isn't the best equivalent, but it's a US dollar equivalent. Um, you can use USDT. So just looking at the fact that Poloniex doesn't have any business in US dollars whatsoever it means that it's not regulated by FinCEN in any way whatsoever uh, because it's trading cryptocurrencies now that doesn't change the fact that you have to identify who you are and follow the AML and KYC so the whole thing is a ruse uh, it's not about following the law they don't care about the law uh, if you look at for example what they did with Kim.com who was a a uh, citizen of the Netherlands who was operating a worldwide website who lived in New Zealand and US authorities raided his home in New Zealand uh, as far as I know he hasn't yet been extradited because uh, basically the US authorities lied to the New Zealand authorities and uh, they started backtracking on that but this just is another example of the incredible overreach of power mad American politicians and law enforcement agencies continuing BTCE has been linked with criminal activity before the verge reports that it was a favorite for ransomware peddlers looking to cash out their ill-gotten earnings with a recent Google survey finding that at least 95 percent of cash outs happen on the exchange well let's see uh, how many banks are associated with criminal activity uh, how often is the dollar associated with criminal activity how often are bank wire transfers associated well we know of course the the world drug trade is a trillion dollar drug trade do you think that is done in Bitcoin do you think it's done in cryptocurrencies do you think it's done in cash it's done in bank wires uh, so this is also silly US authorities also linked him to the failure of Mt. Gox so this is their uh, they're trying to pin this thing uh, uh, theft from Mt. Gox and Mark Carpellis. Of course, it wouldn't surprise anyone that if there were Bitcoins stolen from Mt. Gox, that those uh, some of those Bitcoins would have ended up on the BTCE exchange rather than on the Mt. Gox exchange, which was shut down. Uh, that's probably what they're referring to. Anyway, U.S. authorities also linked him to the failure of Mt. Gox, a Japanese-based Bitcoin exchange that collapsed in 2014 after it was hacked and nearly $500 million worth of digital currency at then current prices went missing. Vinick obtained funds from hack of Mt. Gox and laundered them through BTCE and Trade Hill, another San Francisco-based exchange he owned. They said in the statement, I did not know that he owned Trade Hill. I, I used to use Trade Hill as well. Uh, they weren't around for very long. BTCE quickly became the virtual currency exchange for choice for criminals. U.S. Financial Crimes Enforcement Network is imposing a $110 million penalty on BTCE and a $12 million fine on Vinic. Now, how do you fine an exchange that's located in Russia, or I think it's maybe Bulgaria, and how do you fine a Russian citizen? How do you enforce that? How do you take a property that's in Russia? This is craziness. Through their operation of BTCE, Alexander Vinick and other individuals occupying senior leadership positions within the virtual currency exchange attracted and maintained a customer base that consisted largely of criminals who desired to conceal proceeds from crimes such as ransomware, fraud, identity theft, 
tax refund fraud schemes, public corruption, and drug trafficking. BTCE quickly became the virtual currency exchange of choice for criminals looking to conduct illicit transactions or launder illicit proceeds, all of which BTCE failed to report to both FinCEN and law enforcement. So FinCEN expects uh, people who operate a cryptocurrency exchange in Russia to report to a U.S. financial crimes uh, reporting watchdog, a government agency of the United States. The, gov the U.S. government actually expects everyone in the world to report to their agencies. Is that insanity? Just as new computer technologies continue to change the way we engage each other and experience the world, so too will criminals subvert these new technologies to serve them and blah, 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 blah. So that's that story. Uh, we don't know the whole story. I'll keep watching this one, but uh, um, don't believe anything the government says about it. Uh, but I wanted to cover this story as well. This is from Brandon Smith of Alt Market, and here's another one. By the way, let me say that uh, Jennifer heard Dave Kranzler, and I've heard many people recently refer to Bitcoin as a fiat currency. I don't know what these people are talking about when they put Bitcoin in the same category as a fiat currency it couldn't be the f anything further from it um, it doesn't take somebody with much of an education to understand that the word fiat means decree it, it, the word means dictate by fiat it means that there's a government order so it's like legal tender laws in other words the government declares this currency is legal tender or, or it's good for all debts, public and private. In other words, fiat means that there's a government stamp of approval on a particular currency. So Bitcoin is the exact opposite of that. There is no government stamp of approval because it's not needed, because the use of Bitcoin is determined strictly by the value placed on it by the user, as well as the price of Bitcoin is determined by the value placed on it by the user. There is no decree because it's decentralized. So to refer to Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency, but especially Bitcoin and all of the decentralized cryptocurrencies as fiat, it shows an unbelievable ignorance of what those terms mean. So let's look at this uh, little hit piece from Brandon Smith. Uh, he goes into the Economist cover and people have made a lot of hay about that. There was a 1988 Economist cover that showed a phoenix rising from the ashes and uh, it predicted that there would be a global currency by 2018 and you can see this is the cover here get ready for a world currency it shows a 10 phoenix coin or whatever that is and you can see right there is the date 2018 you can see this is January 9th 1988 so 30 years later they're expecting uh, a world currency so Brandon is saying that yes that's a real story and and it's gonna be the cryptocurrencies so uh, let's look at this argument here and look at some of the arguments he puts forward because uh, this is just another example of the FUD and misunderstanding um, it's just crazy so uh, he goes into the fact that Bitcoin didn't exist when they wrote, wrote that cover uh, he says, enter cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Bitcoin arrived seemingly from nowhere, conjured by a magical crypto wizard by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto, a label supposed to represent a person or group of people that no one has ever seen or heard from. We are simply meant to have faith that they don't work for the NSA or a similar entity. But who cares who they are, right? No, exactly. Who cares who they are? The issue is not who the people are who invented it. Because that's like asking... I've compared it to the Gutenberg press before. Uh, if someone asked, well, who was Johannes Gutenberg? Was Johannes Gutenberg a Jesuit or was he a Protestant or was he an atheist? Or, does it really matter who Johannes, uh, what group Johannes Gutenberg belonged to? Because the fact is that he created this uh, press, uh, movable typeface uh, printing press that was emulated all around the world and it stopped Rome from having control over people being able to read books because then books were to be able, were 
able to be printed very cheaply, and the common man could read the Bible in his own language, and we know what happened. We had the Protestant Reformation, etc. So as to whether or not Johannes Gutenberg belonged to this group or that group, it's completely irrelevant. The only thing that matters is, was the idea sound? Well, we know history's told us it was. It changed the world. And with Bitcoin, is the idea sound? Does the idea work? Uh, I don't really care who Satoshi Nakamoto was. I suspect that Satoshi Nakamoto uh, is a person who just simply came up with an idea and wanted to protect his life. Because if he would have, uh, if, if this idea is what it is, what we think it is, and it's legit, then they would try to kill him. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, so continuing, it doesn't matter because Bitcoin is such a work of art that it is nearly infallible. The perfect countermeasure to a monetary world lorded over by the dollar and the Federal Reserve. Numerous libertarians and anarchists collectively orgasm. They join what appears to be a grassroots effort to bring Bitcoin and blockchain technology into the mainstream. They stop trading as many of their Fed notes for gold and silver as before and buy digital nothings instead. Okay, well, we can see his bias here. The question... To question the validity of the idea elicits dramatic displays of indignance from the Bitcoin cult bordering on zealotry. Okay, that's some name calling. The smartest guys in the room know Bitcoin is the solution to everything. Don't you want to be one of those guys too? Bitcoin is the way, the truth, the life. This or just rhetoric. Some of us are unconvinced and even rather suspicious and with good reason. For example, the advancement of cryptocurrencies into mainstream consciousness has been helped expertly by the corporate media, which frankly does not make sense if they are a real threat to central banking, the central banking monolith. Well, that's just ridiculous. Uh, I've covered Bitcoin since 2011 and uh, I formed the BitcoinChannel.com because there was no coverage of Bitcoin and all of the corporate media reaction was 100% hostile. Uh, I don't know how long this guy has been around, but uh, he's completely wrong. Uh, I think that the corporate media has covered Bitcoin because it's forced, been forced to cover Bitcoin not because they wanted to cover Bitcoin. Anyway, continuing, as they say, when the real revolution happens, it will not be televised. Bitcoin is televised everywhere. Wow, what a specious argument. On top of this, nearly all major international banks are ingraining blockchain tech and cryptocurrencies into their business models, including globalist foundation banks like Goldman Sachs. Well, those banks also fought Bitcoin for many years. I was right on the front lines when that was happening. Goldman Sachs loves blockchain technology. They even refer to it as new technology of trust. Just take a look at their rave reviews and how it will change the world here. What is Goldman's favorite aspect of the blockchain and crypto? The fact that every single transaction is compiled, cataloged, and tracked in the blockchain ledger. For years, one of the major original selling points of Bitcoin was that it was anonymous. It always surprised me that so many people in the liberty movement bought into this scam. Okay, now here is another one of these ridiculous arguments. Okay, uh, no one has ever claimed that the transactions made in the blockchain are anonymous. In other words, they're public information of which address sent to wh which Bitcoin address sent to which other Bitcoin address and how much they sent. That's public information. It's part of the ledger. But as to who owns those Bitcoin addresses, there isn't a ledger for that. There is no record for that. So, yes, it is anonymous. Is it as anonymous as new coins out there? No, it's not, because there are coins that are now building in anonymity features. So they have been able to track down people by, by analyzing the blockchain and looking at which addresses sent to which other addresses. But they still have to find out who owns the one address and who they were sending it to. Uh, so this just simplifies it. Yes, the ledger itself is public and all the transactions are public, but as to who owns those addresses, that's not public. Surely after the revelations exposed by Edward Snowden and organizations like WikiLeaks, it's utterly foolish to believe that anything in the digital world is truly anonymous. The feds have been proving there is no anonymity even in Bitcoin for some time as multiple arrests using Bitcoin tracking have indeed occurred when the FBI decided it was in their interest meaning when the feds want to track Bitcoin transactions, they can. It does not matter how well the people involved cover their actions. No, that's not true. Uh, they have succeeded in some cases, 
but there are other cases, many other cases, that they have not succeeded. Uh, there are coin mixing services and other things, but Bitcoin wasn't designed for that. Bitcoin was just designed to be a public ledger and to prove that the idea works. There are many other coins that now are building in the anonymity feature of the user. Uh, and many of those coins may end up being successful. Monero is one. Uh, Dark coin, I think, is what it was. Uh, I think Digibytes is another one. There's a bunch of them out there that are trying to add that feature. The early promise of anonymity in cryptocurrencies was a lie. Thus, we have the reason why central bankers and international financial conglomerates are piling into Bitcoin like it's the hottest tech stock on the NASDAQ. Imagine a trade system in which every single transaction is compiled and nothing is private. That is the blockchain. Now, anonymity might not matter much when you're dealing with regular people, but what about when you're dealing with governments with the tendency towards corruption and the power to imprison and confiscate? Well, that's the system that we have, Brandon. There is no anonymity in the system that we have right now at all. So I'm not really sure what you're talking about. The loss of all privacy in trade is the next quantum leap in monetary centralization and cryptocurrencies achieve this in spectacular fashion. Not only this, but complete loss of privacy becomes rationalized because without transparency, the blockchain does not properly function. This is what makes the blockchain different from all other digital tr trade mechanisms. With the blockchain, surveillance of transactions is no longer a violation of privacy rights. It is expected. Now, again, he's confusing the public nature of the ledger versus the privacy of the individual sending the transaction. He's totally confused. While the fantasy is that crypto is about decentralization and freedom, it's actually a key to institutionalizing the opposite. I believe the incredible amount of capital being dumped into blockchain developments by major financiers and verbal support from central bankers is a sign that blockchain technology is the basis for the currency system of the new world order. So, wow, what can you say to people like this? Um, I've been fighting people like this for the last six years plus and it's just a continuous war of disinformation FUD um, because they don't have anything that's the bottom line uh, these things are already functioning Bitcoin is still at twenty six hundred sixty five dollars a coin even after US authorities with no jurisdiction whatsoever shut down a Russian exchange and arrested the owner of that exchange who my guess is got kind of confident and lazy and went for a vacation in Greece and that's where they grabbed him they've been trying to get him since 2011 why didn't they just go into Russia and arrest him oh that's right they don't have jurisdiction US authorities don't have jurisdiction over the entire world or at least they claim they do but I think that if U.S. authorities went into Russia, tried to arrest a Russian citizen on Russian soil, might consider that a declaration of war. So they didn't do that. They waited for him to go into Greece. That's my guess. So again, fear, uncertainty, doubt, that's what they have. Uh, that's what they've always had. That's all they've always had. And of course, they're going to fail because the technology is solid. There will be more cryptocurrencies that enable more features of anonymity and the purpose is not for drug dealers and child traffickers and sick pedophiles and and every other criminal in the world, a terrorist, etc. The purpose is not for that. The purpose is to protect the ordinary citizen from intrusive government invasion of their privacy. And cryptocurrencies will achieve that, in my opinion. And we'll talk to you next time.